In the year 2007, this video was leaked on a conspiracist forum called Above Top Secret, simply commenting that the video depicted a disc-shaped UFO outmaneuvering a fighter jet somewhere off the coast of Mexico during the mid-2000s, and the user who uploaded the video claiming that they served aboard a US aircraft carrier and claimed to have secretly smuggled the potentially classified video file off the carrier. The video caught the attention of many, and while some people really believed the story, skeptics pointed out that the video was hosted on a website belonging to a group of German film students, labeling it as a hoax. Internet chatter about the video soon died down, and many thought that was the last of it. It was 10 years later when it resurfaced in an article by the New York Times, linking the clip to a secret government-funded program. Except this time there was a second video, one with more detail and more importantly with sound. That was not it. The article even went in-depth with an eyewitness, even corroborating that the events in the video did indeed take place. And soon, an official statement was released by the Department of Defense, confirming that the events portrayed in the video was, in fact, real. Except that, strangely enough, it was described as unidentified aerial phenomena. Well, you see, the interesting thing about these videos is that this was one instance that the government did not have an explanation to, and it isn't the only one out there. On November 14, 2004, about 100 miles off the coast of San Diego, California, the USS Nimitz was conducting pre-deployment exercises before heading off to the Persian Gulf, when radar technicians aboard noticed something weird quoting multiple objects descending from around 60,000 feet down to 50 feet in a matter of seconds at very high velocity, almost double what a commercial airline's max ceiling height would top off at. These radar tracks that were being observed did not match any known aircrafts, and the radar techs thought that the new system was malfunctioning, but after recalibrating it, the signal still remained. So immediately, the alert was sounded, and two FA-18 were sent to investigate. One of the pilots of the F.A. 18, Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Kurth, recounts that he was only given coordinates, but had no idea what he was investigating, and was puzzled as nothing was showing up on his sensors. But as he made his way to the location, turbulence in the water caught his eye, as if something was boiling on the surface of the ocean, or submerged below. Well, all of this was rather strange to Kurth, as within the same area was a nuclear-powered submarine called the USS Louisville, with a very sensitive sonar. And if this submarine wasn't the one causing this turbulence somehow, this object that was causing it was able to evade detection. Soon, two more F-18S were called onto the scene, with one being piloted by Commander David Frever. And as the two aircrafts arrived, Kurth headed back to the Nimitz. However, the story did not stop there, as when Kurth headed back to the Nimitz, Frever saw something else. Initially, heading down to investigate the object, he noted that it had a cross-like shape resembling a crashed airplane, however, was way larger than any submarine. Fravor and his wingman soon spotted a weird white capsule-shaped craft moving in an erratic manner above the disturbance. Initially, due to the way it descended, it was thought to be a helicopter, but soon they realized that not only did it not have any rotor blades, it didn't seem to have any form of propulsion at all. Despite not having any propulsion, the object seemed to be able to maintain a consistent altitude, and upon closer inspection, Fravor said that it was smaller than an F-18, but looked like a giant tic-tac. As Fravor went down, his partner chose to maintain altitude to observe from the vantage point. However, as Fravor got closer, the UFO changed direction out of nowhere and started to ascend quickly. The duo was now flying in circles, and as Fravor made a last big turn in an attempt to get closer, the unidentified flying object quickly increased its speed to a very high speed and vanished into thin air. At this point, you're probably wondering where did the video come from? Well, just after this took place, Fravor and his wingman raced back to the Nimitz, and as they landed, they told a subsequent flight crew about what had just happened, and this time a different flight crew took to the skies strapped with an infrared camera. According to Lieutenant Chad Underwood, he was in the back seat controlling the camera when he detected an anomaly on his radar dead ahead of them. He reported back that the object simply did not abide by the known laws of physics, and allegedly it was only because Underwood momentarily managed to get a lock on the target with the camera, therefore the footage exists. However, even though we see a UFO being tracked in infrared, 
neither Underwood nor his pilot actually ever made visual contact with the object. At the beginning of the video, we see a UFO being tracked in infrared. Underwood then switches to visible light. Interestingly, the Princeton continued to detect anomalous radar tracks for the next two days before they eventually disappeared near the Mexican island of Guadalupe. Well, if we take a good look at the video by itself, it's very easy to understand why skeptics claim that it's fake, maybe an airplane or a hoax, simply because it's just a dot in the middle of a video with a background that doesn't reveal a whole lot. However, when you put this video in the context of these stories as well as eyewitness reports, it paints a whole different picture. It's one thing to hear about a flying larger-than-life tic-tac, but to hear it from some of the most credible men who even put their career on the line for this story is when you really start wondering if there's really more out there than what they're actually telling us. Even though the original leaker of this footage had actually claimed that there was a much longer and much higher resolution video than the one we see today. Unfortunately, that footage will never see the light of day. But strangely enough, everything still seems to line up as on the evening of November 14th, two men were reported to have arrived by helicopter on the aircraft carrier to collect all the footage before erasing it from the system. Recorded interviews and testimony also seem to show that they were indeed not trying to deceive anyone, but really tell their side of the story, leading to speculation that the real reason why we don't know about it is because it was a major cover-up. Still, it is possible that these objects we see in the video were not aliens, but actually sightings of top-secret military drones or aircrafts, and with the top-secret technology that many whistleblowers have revealed in the past, maybe it's not really a stretch to put it past the government. For all you know, they could be preparing for something bigger. In the summer of 2014, a naval strike group led by the aircraft carrier, the USS Theodore Roosevelt, was conducting pre-deployment exercises somewhere off the coast of Virginia when they detected abnormal radar tracks while conducting routine training missions. With the new fleet-wide upgrade of aircraft radar systems, much like the Nimitz encounters, the systems were thought to be malfunctioning. However, the pilots observed that the behavior of these unidentified objects were unlike anything they had ever seen before and a lieutenant, Danny Alcoin, tried on two occasions to intercept the UFOs and make visual contact, but unfortunately failed. Until a couple days later, when a report surfaced saying that a squadron had narrowly avoided a mid-air collision with a strange, random object in the air. According to the report, both jets were flying no more than 20 meters apart when a cube encased by a translucent sphere flew right in between them. When the pilots returned to base, they spoke to Lieutenant Ryan Graves, who noted that the pilots were visibly shaken by the encounter and advised them to file an official safety report. However, according to Graves, this was not the only incident and UFOs were allegedly seen by many pilots over the course of several months. With more technology unseen before, Graves even says that at one point they were tracking a UFO that was airborne for more than 12 hours at a time. However, no matter how many safety reports were filed by the pilots, the routine training mission still went ahead, as if there was nothing wrong with anything. But at the start of 2015, the Roosevelt Strike Group found itself at the coast of Florida, where they would find undeniable proof that something was amiss. Despite the officers choosing to keep their silence, we are still left with these two videos. Without the audio, many skeptics have claimed that this could be an optical illusion of the infrared camera system at the point in time. Non-skeptics have argued that if it was just an optical illusion, shouldn't the pilots recognize it as such, as they of all people should know what to look out for when out in the skies? Furthermore, an expert on the AT Fleur camera system has come out and said that what you are witnessing here in that video is no optical illusion. But put that aside, the comments made by the pilots still leave a lot of questions to be answered, as in the video you will hear the pilots conversing about a whole fleet of UFOs which are all traveling crosswind, I mean, if what we're looking at is taken at face value, like the flame exhaust of a jet engine, these comments don't make a whole lot of sense. Well, for now, we can only hold our questions, but let's take a look at the third video. When we first watch this video, it may seem like it has the most things going on, but it's arguably the least interesting of the three. Relying solely on what happens on the screen, you'll notice that the UFO in this one is colder than the surroundings, 
as you can see from the infrared visual of the ocean, which is in itself weird because according to the physics that we understand, something moving with that speed will have some sort of propulsion system that radiates some degree of heat. But that's the thing, it is non-existent with this craft. People have come out to say that the UFO was not traveling at high speed, but the video was a result of a parallax error in which the jet carrying the camera fixed on the UFO is moving way faster than the UFO making the little dot seem like it's moving really quickly. But once again, when we look at the numbers on screen, that is simply not true, as it actually states the altitude of the object, which presents a puzzling dilemma, as depending on which side you are leaning towards, it can either be a piece of debris floating in the wind or an actual UFO. But once again, when you introduce the recorded audio of the pilots, you start to wonder why they were getting so excited if it was merely just a piece of debris. We need to take a look at this guy, Luis Elizondo, the person who was really responsible for making these videos available to the public. Well, you see, at the beginning of 2008, this man was the head of a secret government-funded effort called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program that investigated all UFO sightings. But he soon got jaded and disillusioned, as despite the organization's efforts, the government seemed to always put them on the back burner and showed no interest in them, leading him to resign in protest. In his resignation letter, Elizondo writes that certain individuals within the government are staunchly opposed to UFO research, that inflexible mindsets and political contention essentially prevented him from doing his job. He portrays the government as virtually unconcerned about an issue which he believes could pose a threat to national security. You might be wondering why we are bringing this up. Well, you see, this seemingly uncaring attitude was also noted by the witnesses of both the Nimitz and Roosevelt encounters, with recollections from Lieutenant Ryan Graves even saying that moments after showing the commander of the Roosevelt strike group, he remained unfazed and just walked away as if everything was normal. Other reports show that senior officers and staff members aboard the Nimitz and Princeton had equally uninterested responses. And you might think that a near mid-air collision or alien invasion might warrant a bigger reaction. But no, it remained as if everything was normal. Well, it has been argued that there are stigmas surrounding anything related to aliens or spacecrafts, to things of the unknown, simply because the officers are more concerned about their reputation. Anything to do with wacky shenanigans is a sign of weakness, and you can tell that that is the case. As recently, the government has come out to say that there are things out there that they don't understand or have no idea where it comes from, but instead of labeling them as UFOs, they are rebranded as UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenons. But may I suggest that behind all the promotions and fear of destroying one's reputation, there could be another theory that might just make more sense. Well, you see, some speculate that the reason no action was taken when these reports surfaced was because the objects that were sighted were actually a part of a highly advanced, top-secret drone program that the government has been developing in secret. It makes sense, as top officials will have been briefed about it with regard to the protocols that should be observed when someone comes sniffing about it. Some of the eyewitnesses, such as Sean Cahill, who was the chief master at arms on board the Princeton, has come out to say that this is a clear sign that the UFOs were known military assets, even though he goes on to say that it is difficult to believe that such radical innovation could have taken place without anyone knowing about it. When it comes to airships that can move about with such speed, bending the laws of physics as if it was just a mere suggestion, it really does sound like something out of a science fiction movie, and from what we know, this should not be possible. But why is it that time and time again, credible witnesses are coming forward swearing that what they saw is the truth? Well, till this day, there is no real explanation to these sightings that really hold weight, if any at all. From optical illusions to faulty equipment, if this was a norm, you'd wonder if the government is already working with extraterrestrials or worse. Is this all part of a bigger cover-up going on that may fulfill the prophesied fake invasion that the government will stage in order to rule us under one world order? Well, for now, that is left up to you to decide.